Hello, Chess Prince, and welcome to Out of Chess Channel, and welcome to a very special story that I decided to share with you today. It's about the new Stockfish version that has been released now a week ago. It's about the new Stockfish 15 version that you can download for free, which is really, really incredible when you think about it harder. There are not so many products now these days that you can have for free. Everything is so expensive now these days, but the Stockfish developers are giving their best products for free, which is amazing, amazing for the chess community. Uh, we have to say the Stockfish engine is the best product about chess in the world and you can have it for free i'm not sure we have such an example like this so again uh, we wanted to thank also to the developers of the stockfish versions because they're giving their hard work for all of us so everyone can have it really really for free amazing amazing uh, story the story about stockfish because the stockfish story is not the story about profit it's not the story about i don't know charging things it's a story just to giving knowledge for all of us for the whole chess community because you can really have uh, this new stockfish version where you can download many pgns you can analyze the game by play by top grand managers you can maybe have a great preparation openings and sidelines of openings so you can do many many things with the new stockfish 15 so as i said the link to the uh, the stockfish 15 will be in, in the description below so please check it out uh, download it immediately uh, erase the old uh, stockfish 14 version because the new stockfish 15 is uh, 36 uh, elo points higher than uh, stockfish 14 so still it's much much better so it's very hard to also get rating points in the stop uh, engine level it's uh, not such a um, uh, rapid progress it's a slow progress so uh, in the near future maybe the new stockfish 16 uh, engine will be maybe just 10 15 points rating points higher than maybe the stockfish 15 so we'll see uh, as i said the story about the stockfish engine is really a beautiful non-profitable story so uh, let's check out now one great game and i wanted to also show you how to download maybe some other games if you are interested uh, maybe in download yourself some games you should go uh, visit this uh, first of all let's go back to this uh, ccrl chessdom.com website and then you go i don't know here to the 4040 list and then you go for games and then you search uh here games by engine and then you just go to search okay we're right here stockfish and you see now you have the older version stockfish 10 stockfish 11 12 30 14 but you have here also the stockfish 15 you can download uh, here the pgns of some games that have been already played and you can have some fun maybe also analyze some games for yourself at home so let's see now one great game by the new beast by the new stalker 15 here uh, its opponent was another top engine clover uh, the cool part about this game is that stockfish is playing here the game with the black pieces the knight of Sicilian was on the board and uh, here you witness one of the sharpest lines of the knight or so when you go in some tactical battles against stockfish in my opinion it's not so good uh, we have seen maybe some problems when stockfish is forced to play maybe a dubious opening then when the other the the, the opponent of uh, stockfish goes into some positional battles when it's uh, trying somehow to play a slow paced game uh, then it's perfectly fine but when you go into tactical battles against such a beast many times these engines are getting destroyed and here you see really as I said, the sharpest uh, of all, I don't know, Knight of Sitzin, because this is really amazing stuff, because here we have a double piece sacrifice in one particular moment. So let's check out now this tactical beautiful game here. E4 was played by Clover. We have the C5 by Stockfish. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, after move knight to f3 we have d6 d4 c takes d4 knight to d4 after move knight to f6 we have knight to c3 and after move a6 we have reached now the knight of Sicilian. So now from move a6 here the clover engine plays bishop to g5 the idea is clear to mess up a little bit here the pawn structure by playing if you don't i don't play something like h6 then bishop to f6 is going to happen for sure uh this will be i think a more positional battle but i don't like this position by white uh by black sorry because if you try here queenside castle then of course you have already weakened the pawn structure too much there are many weaknesses even if you try here kingside castle then also you you are so vulnerable here to some light square attacks so in the near future black could be challenged with the move knight to d5 white could maybe occupy by this very important score so in my opinion the light score problems are here uh something that bother black in the continuation of the game so this is something that you should not do so after move bishop to g5 e6 is now the main line because if you want to take now of course queen to f6 is going to happen and now black has a solid game without messing up the pawn structure so here in the continuation f4 was played by clover we have knight from b to d7 and now queen to f3 preparing queenside casting so this is now a very popular and very often played line so we have queen to c7 
we have queenside counting and now b5 expansion here on the queen side is many times the main idea of the knight of sicilian many times we want to undermine here a little bit uh, the queen side we want to attack the knight we want to uh, maybe play something like bishop to b7 uh, creating a, a c file attack and similar stuff so uh, here the continuation after move uh, b5 here clover plays a very very aggressive line e5 and you see now uh, two pieces are hanging so that's why you have to play now this move in order to stay in the game bishop to b7 is a must move uh here for black so in the continuation we have knight to e6 and here the fun already starts knight to e6 is not a mistake we have to say it it's just a sharp line uh if you don't know what you're doing here probably you will get destroyed immediately because after move knight to e6 uh, the thing that you should not do here is for instance to play well, bishop takes after it then of course knight to c7 could happen you could maybe here escape with the king but now with the knight to uh, a8 of course we take the rook okay black could also maybe take out the rook on uh, d1 but it's not a problem because here we have e takes f6 and the problem is now after g takes f6 bishop to h4 and bishop to g4 it seems so that black can maybe defend this because this knight cannot escape because these two squares are taken but actually white can escape with this move knight to uh, b6 is a possibility because if you take knight takes b6 then bishop to f6 of course uh here traps the rook so you could also try to maybe king to c7 to attack the knight but not a problem still we have this square to escape and it's game over here for for black white is simply up a whole piece so this is something that you should not do so after move bishop to b7 uh here and knight to e6 we have f takes e6 by stalkers so stalkers get now challenged really really in the most tactical way here after move uh, f takes e6 queen to h3 here was played by clover attacking simply the pawn on e6 so we have here uh d takes e5 queen to e6 first a check we have bishop to e7 and now bishop to f6 and again i think you could have now many many mistakes here from black's perspective uh, you could have maybe here this move knight to f6 but knight to f6 is losing here immediately for for black because then a tactical shot will happen bishop to b5 here we have a takes b5 this wasn't played in game but i wanted to show really the common mistakes that you can make here uh, a takes b5 knight to b5 and here after move queen to c5 now knight to d6 is going to happen and it's game over if you uh, step back here then we have some discoveries uh, you can play knight to b7 here the fork uh, you you can also play here for instance king to f8 then you get checkmate so this is not a way to go into the game so after move bishop to b5 you could try maybe to escape here with king to f8 but still it's not getting better because we can play now f takes e5 uh, black can maybe take out the bishop but now we can also take out uh, here the knight on f6 bishop to f6 and now rook to d7 is coming into the game this is everything for so uh, nothing uh, can be played in a different way rook to d7 you have maybe here this check queen to f4 but now even if you take bishop takes c3 to somehow uh, um, create some weaknesses in front of white king still queen to e7 first to check king to g8 and now we take we're threatening here checkmate on g7 so that's why queen to f6 has to be played but now we take out the queen uh black can also take out the queen but now we take the bishop and this is a completely completely winning endgame here for white we'll take out this pawn and we'll have here three versus zero pawns um, on the queen side so this is something that you should not do here also from a black perspective so as i said this were our this was on our analysis after move knight to f6 this is something that you should not do you have to play here um uh, after move um, bishop to f6 you have to play g takes f6 like the stockfish engine did so here we have bishop to b5 anyway and the game becomes again wild uh now of course the move bishop to b5 doesn't come with a check we have a takes b5 knight to b5 and after queen to c6 again with this maneuver knight to d6 here stockfish is stepping back uh if you try of course knight to um, f7 they will simply uh, play king to c7 and of course if you take we can also take out the knight so here white didn't gain anything so that's why after move king to d8 you have to play knight to b7 after move queen to b7 now rook takes d7 queen to d7 and now after move rook to d1 we have reached now this position and this position has been played so far in top grand master level in international master level i see really many games in the database so it's still i think a position that maybe is familiar to uh knight of sicilian players or maybe it's to someone that has played of course against the knight of sicilian after move rook to d1 you have to take now queen to d1 uh king to d1 and let's stop and evaluate a little bit the position so here the clover engine has the queen and has six pawns on the board stockfish has two rooks and a bishop and three pawns on the board the problem uh for black in this position i think is here uh this uh three pawns that are connected that could be very very dangerous if white starts to push them but i think 
think white problem is a little bit the exposed king here in the center of the board and you see now how Stockfish will make progress here from black's perspective first of all what Stockfish is doing here is trying to expose the spawns is trying to get them here uh, somewhere on the fourth rank and when that happens then of course the king is more naked now of course when the pawns are on second rank uh, then the king can still escape the king can hide but when the pawns are exposed when you create some spaces then you of course leave also some spaces behind and this spaces Stockfish will use beautifully into the in, in now in this game uh, and here I think we'll witness now really the difference between the clover engine and the Stockfish engine because here Stockfish play the perfect perfect endgame here uh, from king to d1 we have king to e8 so first the uh, Stockfish is trying to secure the king by moving it towards the king side we have a4 king to f8 f takes e5 f takes e5 queen to e5 and now rook to g8 uh, queen to f4 and now Stockfish finds a way to escape here towards the corner towards um, h8 and he's trying now to play bishop to f6 bishop to g7 and the king is perfectly fine so one problem solved so you see Stockfish is solving per first the problem of the naked king now the king is uh, passive there on h8 but of course it cannot be any more uh, checked by the queen so here from king to h8 we have queen to d4 we have rook to g7 and now rook to uh, f8 with ideas of course to play rook to f uh, bishop to f6 and then finally and get rid of the queen so here in the continuation after king to b1 we have bishop to f6 we have queen to d4 and now rook to f7 we have now h4 and now rook to a8 simply attacking now the pawn on a4 so we have now queen to c6 stockfish is playing now rook to b8 attacking the b2 weakness so that's why you have to play c3 we have bishop to g7 and you see now stockfish is moving the bishop here towards the king side and now the king is perfectly fine so we have queen to c5 now rook from f to b7 you see how stockfish is building this beautiful attacking formation this move is beautiful because it forces the move b4 and that's exactly what stockfish wanted to get i think now this was the critical moment of the game because after move b4 okay you're trying to push the spawns further but now look at this you have leave uh, you have left a little bit your third at your third rank unprotected you have left also your second rank unprotected the bishop is now aiming towards the c3 square so now you have created spaces but you have left also some space behind and now Stockfish will attack the spaces because if you would have played something like queen to a3 here uh, in order maybe to stay in the game this is not possible because rook to b3 is going to happen then you can play this one and then bishop to c3 is simply winning the game rook to b2 will happen and uh, it's game over so this is something that oh, white should not do so that's why b4 but now Stockfish is saying now you have given me some spaces now I want to use the spaces by playing rook to e2 maybe include also this rook into the game maybe even to deliver checkmate with both of this rook so here we have a5 we have a rook to b8 a6 now rook to uh, c8 and now queen to b5 this was of course a tricky idea because if you play now bishop to c3 then the game becomes pretty much equal because now uh, the clever engine can move up the king here and uh, support um, the spawns with the king will probably play in one particular moment king to a5 king to b6 is trying as i said simply to push the spawn further so that's why stockfish played here to correct move uh, rook to f8 first because you cannot take of course immediately rook to c3 uh, this is not possible because the uh, rook on e8 is hanging so that's why rook to f8 first we have uh, c4 uh, here by clover but now rook to d8 and you see now what stockfish is trying to do uh, here rook to d2 and maybe then afterwards rook to f1 delivering checkmate so that's why the queen has to be now passive queen to g5 is preventing of course some ideas of rook to d2 so we have here now h6 kicking away the queen queen to e3 rook from f to e8 queen to f3 and now comes finally this idea rook to d2 we're threatening also now immediately checkmate on on um, uh, e1 so that's why king to c1 uh, we have rook to a2 king to d1 we have a rook to uh, d8 and now king to e1 you see how stockfish included now this rooks into the game it doesn't matter now that white is here there's three pawns this uh, attack by both of these rooks with the support of the bishop is something that that uh, white cannot handle anymore so queen to, rook to e8 we have king to uh, d1 again some uh, perpetuals but now finally rook to a1 king to e2 now a new check uh, king to d2 and now stockfish grabs the first pawn so we have king to b7 rook to a2 again a new check we have uh, king to d3 rook to a3 again here clover is trying to do the same is trying to get a draw by a threefold repetition but it's not possible because stockfish plays now a beautiful move bishop to c3 and this is now as i said the critical moment of the game because if you play something like king to c2 then you get first rook to d8 and i'm not saying a good way anymore to defend this position 
for instance if you try c5 then you get here rook to d2 first to check in with rook to a1 you get checkmated so this is a picture that sh we should memorize because this is now the main tactical idea here by black this is the the way that stockish wants to win the game so that's why bishop to c3 you have to play king to d3 but now bishop takes uh b4 is of course a discovered check you have to play king to d4 after bishop to c3 king to d5 in this position clover resigned why did it resign because here we have this one uh rook to a5 uh we're simply attacking the king even if you cover yourself then something like rook to uh e5 is going to happen so we'll take out this pawn so clover would lose now all of these three pawns on the queen side that were i think the main strategy the main strength of white in the conscientious but stockfish played of course this beautiful beautiful end game and won it eventually so this is i think the strength of stockfish because uh, this was an equal position but stockfish played the most accurate moves most aggressive moves uh, included all of the pieces into the game secured the king also in one particular game uh by playing king to h8 understood i think the beauty of this line and again, again as i said got out of this tactical mess because uh, we have to say clover played this beautiful double piece sacrifice and if you don't know what you're doing you could get smashed in an early stage of the game so really really great game interesting ideas of the knight of sicilian if you want to see more stalkers brutal games check out our uh, commented chess games played by computer series with some more games played by stockfish alpha zero lila zero and many many more and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and chess is the best of course